everybody, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 32 of my podcast. I am so happy you're here. Welcome to any new viewers, and welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I love it, and I'm so happy you're here. Today is a cloudy and drizzly Friday in August here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. And we do have a Ravelry group for this episode. That, <laughs> that is where you will find the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It is also where you'll find giveaway and knit along news and a bunch of other fun stuff. So I think that you should go check it out and join if you want to. It's in Ravelry, under Squirrel Pie Productions, in the Groups tab. Find it. So today I don't really have any, like, admin stuff to talk about, uh, so I'm just going to get right into it with uh, what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing is the Agnes dress that I made a while ago and that I wear, like, on half of these episodes. So <laughs> I love this dress so, so much. This is the Agnes Sewing Pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's an adaptation that I did where I just extended the length of it to make it into a dress or a tunic or whatever. And I sewed it out of some lightweight black jersey cotton and I love it, as you can tell, because I wear it all the time. It's an awesome pattern. Um, if you guys are interested in like a really basic jersey tee sewing pattern, it's really good. I know there's a few out there by um, some sev several different indie sewing pattern companies and this is the only one that I've tried and I super super love it. So you want to know what I have finished this week? Because I have two finished objects. Bam! So excited. Two finished objects you guys. So <laughs> the first one is some socks. These are my floating socks, and this is knit out of Moonstone Dye Works in the Stellina Sock Base in the floating colorway. This is my hand dyed yarn company, and I love how these socks came out so much. You want to know what my favorite part about them is? It's how I ran out of yarn and I have a teeny bit of a gray toe on the second one, but not on the first one. I really like things that are mismatchy, so I'm super stoked that <laughs> that happened. I ran out of yarn right here as I was like nearing the end of my toe decreases. It was awesome. Um, so I just used some of the contrasting color, which is some gray cascade that I had in my scrap stash, and I don't know what kind of cascade it is. Um, as I've mentioned previously, it's probably either their fingering weight that has merino wool and nylon or their fingering weight that has merino wool and silk. I think it's probably the nylon one, but I can't remember. I still have a bunch of it left over. So I knit these vanilla socks, um, 56 stitches around. I cast on here at the cuff with a size zero needle and I used a size zero to knit the two by two ribbing that I like to do on my socks. And then stockinette for the leg, I did a, what do you call it, slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which is my very favorite heel of all time. And then um, my favorite rounded toe with the Kitchener finish, which I think fits my toes very nicely, and I love it. So these are my floating socks. I am very happy that they're done. I think they're beautiful. The floating colorway is like one of my very favorite colorways that I dye in the Moonstone Dye Workshop. I love it. I think I want to knit a garment out of it, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, that's my socks. I don't know which number this is for my box of socks. I am partaking in Kristen of Yarngasm's year-long epic knit along that's got to be the most popular knit along of all time at this point um, which is the box of socks knit along and I was really good the first half of the year keeping track of where I was at in my box of socks because I had my box 
I had all my socks in my box and they were just like, they would go in the box every time I was done making them. So it was really easy to keep track. Um, but a little while ago I decided that I really just wanted to wear all of them. So I just dumped them all out into like my regular sock thing that I keep my hand knit socks in and I started wearing them. So now I have no idea cause I can't count, but I'm going to, I don't know. I think I'm on track. Let's say this is what's it's the eighth month. This is pair eight. I'm going to say this is pair eight. I'm, on, I'm totally on track. I'm doing great. I'm going to knit 12 pairs this year. So easy. So totally going to do that. Um, so these are going in my box of socks, which I'm going to throw them in my sock thing and start wearing them. I really, really like them. So that's my first FO. Super excited about these. I love them. I love sparkly socks because they're awesome. My next finished object is the slant dish cloth. And this is a Knit Picks pattern. So a little while ago, I want to say like a couple years ago, maybe Knit Picks put out a series of dish cloth patterns. They're all free. You can find them on Ravelry and on their website. And I feel like maybe they put out 12. I think it was like a year of dish class where they put out one every month. And I really like a lot of the patterns they put out in that series. And this one is called the slant dish cloth. And it's one of those really basic, really simple squares that you can knit where you start at one corner, you do increases until you get to your widest point, and then you do decreases until you are done. Super easy, super basic, really nice. I love it. And I knit this not as a dishcloth, but as a blanket square. And this is for the Knit Together project, which is a project that Melissa from Knitting the Stash blog and podcast is putting together. The idea behind it is that you knit an eight by eight inch blanket square, send it to her. She will collect all of the blanket squares that she gets. Eventually she will seam them all together into a blanket and everybody who contributed a square will be entered into a drawing to win the blanket. I think this is such a cool project. And another idea behind it is that she has sent out a bunch of sets of needles to knit your blanket squares on. And I was one of the people she sent a set of needles to. It was a set of size six double pointed needles. Um, and then I knit my square, I'm sending it to her. And then I sent the needles on to someone else and they're going to knit a square and pass the needles on again. Um, now you don't have to be a part of this like needle chain to be able to contribute. Um, if you want to take part in this really awesome project that she's putting together, check out her blog, which is knitting the stash and there's a post about it and you can just participate directly with Melissa. Um, so check that out. I really super think it's a cool project and this is my blanket square for it. And I finished it. It's a super quick, super easy knit, this square. My yarn is some hand spun and it's like about a worsted weight. So it was super quick. Um, and it is some spun right round merino in the rock and roll love letter colorway. And it's these really beautiful hot pinks and teals and purples. And I love it. And I really love the effect of how I started at one corner with the teal and then I went through this like kind of repeating gradient sort of thing and then I ended up at the teal again and I love how it came out. I think it's so cool. So this is going to go off in the mail to Melissa soon. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I think it's a really cool thing she's doing. And again, this is hand spun, chain plied, so it's three ply. And it's about a worsted weight knit on size six double pointed needles. Check out that pattern if you're interested in doing a blanket square. It's really easy to get the size you want on this because you just stop when you hit eight inches and then you start decreasing again. Um, it's a really good dishcloth pattern too. So check it out. Check out their whole collection of dishcloth patterns. I've made a few of them and I really like that whole idea that they did by putting out these bunch of free dishcloth patterns. Super cool. Okay, done with that. Those were my FOs. I like them. Now on to what I've been working on this week. More socks. 
I've knit on a lot of socks this last week. It was so much fun. So the first ones that I worked on were my Townis socks. And these are living in my Sugar Tots bag with the boxes on it. And the Town of Socks is a sock pattern by Becky Sorensen of the Stringing It Together podcast. She has Soprano Knits on Instagram. And her sock pattern is awesome. And she is hosting a knit along for them right now that you should check out if you're knitting them or you want to knit them. I love them. So this is the first one that has been done and you've seen before. It's this really beautiful triangle-y knit pearl pattern and I love them. Here's the heel on the first one. This is the New Depths heel which is a short row heel with a gusset and I love them. I knit these on a size one with a zero for the cuff like I always do. Um, the yarn is Space Cadet Yarns, which, here's my messy cake. Um, this is the Azara base, which is a BFL and nylon base, and the color is called Gentle, and it's this really pale pink. It's got, I always say it's got really vague shots of like, this like kind of dingy bluish green throughout it, but whenever I say that, I can never actually find them. I know they're there. I know they're there because you can see them in the skein and you can see them kind of vaguely throughout the whole thing but they're so vague that they just kind of get lost in it but I'm <laughs> they're there it's not just pink it's got these it's got like a nice depth of color to it with that stuff I just don't know if I can show you but anyway um, this is a really nice yarn I really enjoy working with it um, it's paler than like it's it's paler and more like solidly tonal than what I'm used to working with. I I like pale muted colors, but I'm used to more, I don't know, maybe darker, maybe deeper colors. I don't know. This is, it's just like, it's super light. It's like almost white. Um, but I really enjoy it. And Becky in her pattern calls for a German twisted cast on, which I did and I fell in love with and I do with like all my socks now, or I'm going to because I love it. Um, she calls for a twisted rib on the cuff, but I did a regular one by one rib because I'm not the biggest fan of twisted rib. Um, and then I did a different toe than is called for in the pattern. I don't remember what toe she calls for, but I did my rounded toe with the Kitchener finish that I like doing. I love this heel. It's a heel that she wrote. She is um, adding some modified instructions I think to where you can kind of customize it to your own heel which is cool but this is where I am on my second one I'm knitting these on my high highs and I'm almost to the point of starting the heel and there's my lost and fond sheep progress keeper which perfectly matches my yarn I love it um, so I did I'm doing one in a tiny bit more repeat, I think. Yeah, one repeat for the leg and then just a little bit more. And then I'm going to start the heel. So I'm going to start that soon. And let's get this. <laughs> I'm really enjoying these. Um, I'm excited that she's doing a knit along for them. So go check that out if you're interested. And these are coming along. Hooray! My next work in progress is my pair of spousal socks. These are living in my very wonderful library knitting bag. You can find me in 74643. Dewey Decimal Club. So these are the socks that I'm knitting for my husband. They are knit out of Knit Picks Tweed in the Cobblestone Heather colorway. And here's where I'm at. I've got my other Lost and Fun Progress Keeper on these ones, and this one matches these because it's a black and white panda and they're gray socks. 
Um, that was very important to me. So <laughs> these socks are the biggest socks that I've ever knit. Um, they're my first socks that I've ever knit for my husband. I've been promising him these socks for years. I bought this yarn years ago to knit him socks and I'm just now doing it. So I'm pretty proud of myself. These are his late birthday present. I am knitting these on my high highest sharp size ones. And again, I did a size zero on the cuff. German twisted cast on, cause I'm obsessed now. I love this cast on so much. Two by two rib. And these are just vanilla socks. Okay, they're mostly vanilla socks. I am at, I'm doing this like little bit of rib right on the side. It's gonna be on the outside of each sock. And it's just two columns of two stitch pearl ribbing. I'm doing two ribs pretty much on the outside of each sock. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to add some give or stretch or whatever you call it. Um, because I feel like patterned and ribbed material is safer when you're knitting for other people. Um, but I enjoy knitting vanilla socks too much to do an all over rib for him. So I'm just doing a little column of it. And I'm hoping that kind of makes some fit maybe more snugly or more forgivingly than a regular vanilla sock might fit. So I am really enjoying that actually. I might try that for myself because it kind of adds a little something to do once every round rather than doing something the whole way around every single round. So that's nice. I like it. Um, this is a 70 stitch count sock. Um, I meant to do a 72, but I accidentally only cast on 70 and I decided to keep it that way because he has two different size feet, you know, just by a little bit. So this is going to be for the smaller foot. And then the second sock is going to be 72 stitches. It'll be for the bigger foot and the way that he can differentiate which sock goes on which foot is that the ribbing goes on the outside. I'm so smart, right? Oh yeah, I'm so smart. Um, I'm actually really excited about that. I think that's pretty smart. <laughs> so this is where I am so far. I thought these were gonna be like super boring and I thought I was gonna dislike them because they're just gray and they're big, but I actually am really enjoying them. I kind of forget sometimes how much I love stockinette. I just, I love knitting in the round without thinking about it. It's my favorite. So the first one, I probably gonna start the heel soon. I haven't, I've tried them on him and they fit like pretty good, it seems like, um, but I haven't tried them on for the length. So I'm just gonna put them on his foot again, see how far up his leg they go and see if he likes it. And then whenever we get to the point where he likes, we'll start the heel. Now here is my ball of knit picks. Again, this is, their Stroll Tweed, which is their fingering sock base. It's like merino and nylon and Donegal Neps for the tweed. And it's the Cobblestone Heather colorway. It's gray. And here is my second one. I decided to try to do concurrent socks for these to keep myself interested. And I started and finished the cuff for the second one on my size zeros. Um, but I don't have another pair of size ones, so I can't start this one yet until I finish my town of socks because that's my other size ones. I can only do two, two pairs of socks at a time. Or two socks at a time. Because I only have two size ones. I'm knitting these Magic Loop because I enjoy Magic Loop. And I really like them. I've got three balls of this yarn. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not the Cobblestone Heather. I lied. I just saw the tag in the bag. It's called Flagstone Heather is the colorway. Oopsies, Flagstone Heather. And it is 65% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 10% Donegal tweed. Um, I mentioned this in the last episode, but this is not my favorite sock yarn. Um, I don't know. It's kind of loosely plied. It's it's kind of splitty, which hasn't been an issue for me, like actually splitting the yarn. It just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't feel the best to work with. It's fine, it's like totally fine, but it's good husband sock yarn. 
I don't know if I would buy a bunch of stroll for myself to knit myself socks with, but it's perfect for him. <laughs> so um, I have been enjoying these much more than I thought I was going to, which is super awesome. Maybe that means I'll knit him more socks. I don't know. I've always been like super happy that I, I have small feet so I can knit socks with a low stitch count and they go by like super fast. Um, but it turns out I really like knitting bigger socks because it's just more, it's more fun, easy, mindless stockinette to knit. And I love that. I love it. So those are all my socks. Three socks this week. I think that's super fun. My next work in progress is living in my Woolen Vine Yarns Neon Cats bag, which I purchased from her a long, long time ago when she did a short run of project bags. I love it. Look at this freaking lavender zipper. So this is my Rebel 2 shawl. Uh, now the pattern for this is the Rebel by Leslie Ann Robinson, and the Rebel 2 is a variation where you can use two colors instead of one. And this is a brioche shawl. This is my entry into Nessa of Kilta Crafts brioche knit along that is running, and I am cheating because it was a whip, but I'm a cheater, so. Here it is so far. It is getting big. It is getting crazy big. I think I should put it on a bigger needle. Longer needle. Cable. Longer needle cable. I'm so good at saying things. But I love how this is coming out. I feel like I am in a black hole of brioche though. Remember how for like the past two months or something I've been like obsessed with brioche and I love it and like the last three shawls that I've made have all had brioche in them because I love it so much and I like tell everybody that they should knit brioche too and I love it, I love it, I love it. I think I might be getting a little... I'm... I don't know. I feel like I'm in a black hole of brioche right now. It's just all brioche all the time at my house. It's fun, but I think I might be ready to move on. After this shawl, I think I might be, be ready to move on to something that isn't brioche. Um, but I am still really enjoying this. This is knit out of two different yarns. The pink, which is the main color, is Moonstone Dye Orcs. In the F Me Pumps colorway in the Merino Single Base, it's a single ply fingering weight Merino yarn. And the contrasting color is Goth Day Cake by Volan Vine Yarns. And this is in her new Nouveau base, which is also a single ply merino fingering weight yarn. And I love them. You may notice that these are no longer in cake form. And that is because I have reballed them into ball form, which is like a weird thing that I have. So I love caking yarn into cakes with a ball winder. I love cakes of yarn, right? And you can, with cake of yarn, pull cake of yarn, pull from the center or from the outside, right? I really enjoy pulling from the center. I don't know why, it just feels good to pull it out and there's that little bit of resistance, I love it. But once I get about halfway through, it starts getting really messy and sloppy and like empty inside, you know? And then I start getting annoyed. So, <laughs> sometimes I will take what's left from the outside and wind it into a ball which takes a bunch of extra time and kind of work. So I, it's like a bad habit I have. I don't know why I do that. I could just pull from the outside and it stays in a nice neat cake the entire time, but then I don't get that really satisfying feeling of pulling from the center. I also really enjoy working from balls. So I could just from the beginning ball it up instead of cake it up. I don't know. This is like a bad habit of mine. I do this a lot where I start a cake, I pull from the center, and then halfway through I wind it into a ball. I don't know. <laughs> it's a habit of mine. I like doing it. Um, I feel like sometimes I should switch it up though and just either wind it into a ball from the beginning 
or pull from the outside, which I do sometimes. I like to switch it up, you know? Anyway. <laughs> Those are the yarns that I'm using. Um, here is what the contrast side looks like, and I think it's super beautiful. I love gray and pink together. One of my favorite color combinations. And I am getting pretty far along. This is the kind of shawl that kind of looks the same the whole way through. So you don't get that satisfying, like, Prog progression feeling that you do with shawls that are knit in sections, like different looking sections, um, because it still just looks like it did when I first started it. There's just more of it. Um, but this shawl has these beautiful little flower motifs going up the whole edge of it. Um, it's a big crescent shaped shawl. I am almost done with the second section, I believe. And we'll see where it goes from there. I haven't really read forward. I'm pretty sure what happens is all of these flower things on the bottom that you see running along the edge, I'm pretty sure they'll all run along the edge this way too. So I am excited to get this done. Like I said, I love brioche, but I feel like I'm kind of trapped in brioche right now. <laughs> Um, so I'm super stoked to get this off the needles. I think it's going to be a really beautiful wearable shawl. It's a big crescent shaped shawl. So this has been coming along. It's still super fun. I'm just ready to move on to a different shawl. And do I know what my next shawl is going to be? Oh yeah, I do. I totally know what my next shawl is going to be. Okay, so I am doing, um, the Marled Magic Shawl. I've wanted to make that shawl ever since it like came out as a full pattern and you were able to see what the whole thing was it was stephen west's last mystery knit along and i love it and i was watching the dyer's notebook podcast with laura and she announced that her and Kristen of the yarngasm podcast are going to be doing a knit along for it and i'm so totally taking part in that i am so excited that is going to be next my next shawl but i can't work on it and i can't start it until i finish this because that is like my thing. It's like a personal rule. I don't like knitting on two shawls at the same time. So I'm gonna finish this soon and I'm gonna start on the Marled Magic. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to knit that. It'll be my second Stephen West pattern. My first one was the Exploration Station and I had so much freaking fun working on that that I just can't wait to knit another one of his patterns. I want to knit all his patterns because they're just fun. They're super fun. He knows how to write a pattern that's like entertaining and fun to work on. So I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to start that. Um, I have one more work in progress. This is a big one, you guys. This is a big one. So, a long time ago. Well, here's the bag it's living in. This is my Fat Squirrel Speaks project bag with my pink pom-pom puff on it. This is the biggest project bag I own. You want to know why I need such a big project bag? I'll tell you in a second. So you may or may not remember this guy from a long time ago. This was a swatch that I swatched <laughs> and then never made the project for because of hesitancy. All right, so there's that. I finally cast on for the brownstone pullover. Here's what I have so far. So the brownstone pullover is a pattern by Jared Flett. It's a shawl collar men's pullover. And I promised my mother's boyfriend last Christmas that I was gonna make it for him. They bought the yarn, which is Cascade 220. There's one of the balls. And I bought the pattern and I swatched for it and then I never made it. It's because I'm intimidated. I am intimidated by the fact that I'm making the extra large size, so it's a big sweater. I'm intimidated by the fact that it's all knit in Cascade 220, which is like a solid blue color, the one that I have, and I thought that I would find that super boring. And I was intimidated by the fact that I'm going to be knitting a sweater for someone else who isn't here. So I never cast it on. But I finally did it, because I was like, you know what? You need to just do it. You need to just do it. So I did it. Ah, I'm so excited. So the brownstone pullover, it's a really nice pullover. 
and I really like how it looks and I think it's gonna come out great I took all of his measurements um, last year <laughs> so I have all of those and I'm pretty much winging it I'm going based on the measurements that I have and the measurements in the pattern and I think it's gonna be fine you know what I think it's gonna be fine so I started with the sleeves which is what the pattern says to do and I'm doing them two at a time on Magic Loop, which is my preferred way to do sweater sleeves. I don't like doing two at a time with socks. I actually don't know if I've tried. Have I? I don't think I have. But I'm not that interested in doing two at a time socks, but I do enjoy doing two at a time sleeves. So um, I, well, let me show you this side because it's got my Sugar Tots Progress Keeper, which is a chocolate chip cookie. Okay, so this is a big worsted weight sweater. Um, the pattern calls for a size eight needle for the body and seven for the ribbing. Um, I went down a needle size. I'm doing six for the ribbing and seven for the body. And my swatch was made with a size eight. And it matched gauge pretty perfectly. And I decided to go down a needle size based on that. And here are my reasons. Um, I knit another sweater for myself, another Brooklyn Tweed pattern on a size eight with worsted weight yarn, which is really similar in weight to the Cascade 220. And the gauge was perfect, but then once the whole garment was made, it was so heavy just because it was a garment that the, I feel like the eight needle gauge was way too loose and it stretched out a lot um just with the weight of it like as you wear it it just pulls so i wanted i wished i would have gone down a needle size with that even though i would have been at a smaller gauge technically i feel like as i wear it it kind of stretches out to what the correct gauge is supposed to be so the other thing is that his measurements with the ease, with the intended ease, his measurements are pretty in between the large and the extra large. I felt like the extra large with the intended gauge would have been just too big and too loose. And there's going to be so much fabric because he's a big guy that I just felt like it was going to be too bleh. So I decided to go down a needle gauge, a needle size, bring in the fabric a little tiny bit and it'll be a little bit smaller than the measurements in the pattern, but I think that's gonna work out fine. And you know what, if it doesn't, it's okay. It'll be fine. It, I don't think it's gonna be too tight on him. But you know, in any case, I'm winging it because he's not here and he can't try it on. So it's gonna turn out how it's gonna turn out. And I, I'm always confident that it's gonna be fine. Sometimes it's not fine and that's okay. <laughs> but um, I'm considering working on the sleeves like halfway and then blocking them and see and measuring the gauge again just to see what I'm gonna get um, but I don't know we'll see I may just continue to wing it so um, I think this is gonna be a super easy pattern to knit it's like all stockinette um, I am adding this silver gray color here because the intention for this sweater is for it to be a cowboy sweater now, my mother's boyfriend is like a big Cowboys fan. Um, they're both into football. I don't know anything about football. I'm not into football. It's fun, but I'm just not into it. Um, he loves the Cowboys. He wears like only Cowboys clothing. <laughs> Most of his clothing is something with the Cowboys on it. So he really wanted a sweater. He calls it a smoking jacket. That's what he wanted. Um, and what he means by that is a shawl collar sweater. And he wanted a cowboy smoking jacket. So he picked these two colors. Um, this is, like I said, Cascade 220 Superwash. And let's see if I can figure out the color. I can't, because it doesn't say the color. I know that this one's called Silver Gray. I don't know what this one's called, but it's, I think it's navy. It's probably just navy. So these are Cowboys colors, the football team. And this sweater is gonna be knit all in blue. I put the stripes on the cuffs, I'm gonna put these same stripes on the bottom of the hem, right above the ribbing. And what I have decided to do is to do a cowboy star, which is like their logo, 
as a duplicate stitch thing somewhere on the sweater. Um, he wanted a cowboy star on it somewhere. And I was trying to figure out how to do that. And I think that might be one of the things that stopped me from casting it on too, is I wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate that. And my original intention was just to do, was to do it in color work somewhere on the sweater. And I think I ended up realizing that, I ended up realizing that I didn't want to deal with it pretty much. <laughs> um, I went on Ravelry and I searched in the projects for like something like Cowboy Star. And I found a bunch of projects that people had done with a cowboy theme. And I wanted to see how they did their stars. And what I read on some of them was that they had a hard time figuring it out. And that I remember somebody said they had to end up using a combination of stranded color work and intarsia. And that just sounded like, hmm. <laughs> this is maybe not as simple as I thought it was going to be because it's just one it's it doesn't it's not going to go all the way around it's just one piece of color work right so that's like intarsia I've never done intarsia I'm not really that interested in learning right now um and it just seemed like it was going to be complicated trying to figure it out so it occurred to me that I could just do duplicate stitch I'm totally just going to do that. And that way I don't have to decide where it's going to go now. I don't have to incorporate it into the right, like, part of the pattern to be on the right part of the body. So I'm just going to knit the sweater, easy peasy, and then I'm going to go back later, pick where I want the star to be, and just put it on. I am really excited about that decision. Um, I think that's going to make it a lot easier. So that star is going to be in the silver gray. The rest of the sweater is going to be in this navy. And I've got, like, ten skeins. This is going to be... A lot of yarn. Um, so the sleeves have been fun so far. It's just stocking it with increases and I think it's gonna go by pretty quick. It's gonna be big but I think it's gonna be a pretty simple pattern and I am excited that I'm finally getting this going. I don't feel like a jerk anymore because <laughs> of not starting it like I said I was gonna a year ago. I did promise it as a Christmas gift for this next year so I think I'm going to get it done in time for my intended um, promise. So that's my last project. I am really proud of myself for getting going on this. I'm proud of myself because I am knitting two things right now for other people. That is like very unlike me and I am um, pretty proud of myself. So Brownstone Pullover by Jared Flood, Cascade 220 Superwash. I'm getting that thing going. I think it's going to be awesome. Yes. Okay, spinning. I have been spinning a little bit this past week, and I brought over my bobbins to show you what I've been working on. This is what it looks like. This is some Moon Rover fiber. It is superwash merino and nylon fiber. And I am spinning this on my Shocked Ladybug wheel, which I love. And I am spinning it all as one long single. And then I'm going to chain ply it to hopefully get like a self-striping yarn. Um, so I have I had one big braid. Here is what one of my little balls looks like. I split it up into a bunch of these little balls. Um, pretty much what I did was I took the whole length of the braid and split it this way as opposed to this way. This this way as opposed to this way. I'm trying to do the Amy Beth thing from the <laughs> Pat Squirrel Speaks. Um, but I, I split it all in half like lengthwise. And then I split all of those in half again and again so that I could get smaller stripes. So each one of these is the whole length, just like a skinny piece of it. So I'm spinning these just one after another, and then I'm going to chain ply it, and hopefully I'm going to get this awesome self-striping yarn, and I'm so excited about it. Um, it's five ounces of fiber, so it's going to be a big skein of yarn. And I'm hoping for a fingering weight. That's my intention. I'm probably going to get more like a sport just because that's how I spin. And um, it's coming out pretty fine. So I don't know. Maybe it'll be like... A heavy fingering 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what I get and then I'll work with it. Um, so it's going to be more than I need for a typical pair of socks. So what I'm thinking is maybe I'll do like really tall socks, like, like just below the knee socks or maybe just above the knee socks and then I can fold them down. I don't know. We'll see. But I really want some hand spun socks out of this and, um, I'm almost halfway done with my fiber. So this is coming along. I hope it's done soon because I really, really, really want to cast on. So that is Moon Rover Fiber. Um, it doesn't have a colorway name. Here's the tag for it. It was um, some fiber that I got in her club, February 2015. And uh, this is a little sachet packet, sa satchels. I don't know what you call it. It's a little envelope filled with lavender. And this is what came with the fiber. And I think it is super adorable and it smells really good and I love it. It's been fun spinning. I don't spin that often these days. Um, spinning something I kind of go in and out of with like phases and I'm getting back into it right now. So that's everything I worked on this week. Um, for my favorites, I'm just gonna talk about a couple um, upcoming plans, one of which is a new purchase. Uh, as you may have seen, Tilly and the Buttons had a sale recently. I'm not sure if it's still going on. Check their Instagram to see if it is. Um, I saw, I've seen this dress for a long time and I've never been that interested in making it until I saw Becky's version. Um, Becky of Stringing It Together, she made a couple of these bateen dresses and they looked so good that I decided I wanted to make them too. So I bought the pattern because it was on sale and I'm really, really excited to try it out. I don't have any fabric picked for it yet. Um, I probably have something in my stash. She made a jersey jer version, which is always appealing to me. I love jersey. And so I might check that out, I might try. But this is the Bateen dress by Tilly and the Buttons. It's a really cool pattern. Um, it's got an elasticized waist and then just a really simple scoop net top with these really simple sleeves. I'm not sure what the sleeves come up. They're called kimono sleeves. I just read it on the back. <laughs> um, so it's got a scoop net top and a scoop neckline. Oh my goodness. And kimono sleeves. And I really, really like that sleeve style a lot. So... I am excited to have received this and on sale. Next thing that I've got coming up, I finally decided what my next sweater is going to be. I've been like obsessing over my next sweater for a while and um, I finally picked it. And I'm going to be using stash yarn. I really wanted to make the Sunset Highway sweater, but that was the one I would have to buy yarn for. So. I have chosen to use some stash yarn. I've got a sweater's quantity of this Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock medium weight, which is their sport weight. I've had a sweater's quantity of this in my stash for years, and I want to use it. So Hohi Locatelli had a pattern on, I mean, <laughs> had a sale on her patterns 20% off, and that I believe is still going on right now. So check out her Instagram feed, which is Hohi Locat, to check out that sale. Um, so I bought the even flow pattern, which is a sport weight cardigan pattern that I think is just gorgeous. And I think this yarn is going to be really good for it. So I'm totally going to cast that on like really soon. Um, I got the pattern and I'm going to swatch maybe today. Um, and I'm going to make it with this really gorgeous socks that rock yarn. And this is in the bittersweet colorway. And it's this really gorgeous, like, burgundy, but it's kind of like an orange tone burgundy. I love it. It's so pretty. It's going to be a super good fall sweater. I can't wait. Um, so that's what's up next for me. Hopefully I do some sewing in the next couple weeks. I don't know. I haven't been sewing lately. Um, but I did finally get something I need for my next Love It First Stitch pattern. I'm, if you don't know, I am trying to work my way through the Tilly and the Buttons book, Love It for Stitch. Um, it's got a bunch of sewing patterns in it and I want to work my th way through sewing each one in order. 
Um, and I finally got a zipper that I need to make the next thing, which is the Megan dress. So maybe that'll be coming up soon. We'll see. Um, that is all I have for you guys this week. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not yet. Um, I love having you here every week and I look forward to recording every single week and thank you for being here. Um, so I hope you guys are having a lovely, lovely week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you're doing something fun every day. So have fun and stay awesome. Bye guys. <laughs>